It's economic growth. The other dimension of this is an equity dimension. Taxes and tax policy changes has, have distributional consequences as well. So when we start talking about taxes, it's, it's a little bit like trade, Bill, in the sense that it depends on your point of departure. If you focus primarily on the efficiency question, you'll relegate the equity in the, the, the loser situation aside. Um, if you focus on the distributional consequences of trade, you ignore or tend to ignore the fact that trade expands the size of the economic pie. So there are some policies that have effects on economic growth, but I would argue they tend to be relatively small because the response to taxes tends to be relatively small. Uh, so having said that, the, the tax plans of the two candidates differ radically. <coughs> Um, they, they really line up very well with a traditional, uh, at least in some ways, with a traditional Republican versus a Democratic approach to taxation. So the Hillary Clinton plan would uh, cut taxes for everybody outside of the top 1% of the distribution. Virtually everyone would get some kind of a tax cut other than the top 1%. The top 1% would face an increase in their burden of about 7%, significant but a 7% increase in their burden. The Trump plan, on the other hand, would lower tax rates for everybody. I'm talking business, uh, excuse me, I'm talking personal taxes, not business taxes, personal taxes. Uh, the Trump plan would lower taxes on everybody. There are actually a few kinks in his proposed tax schedule that would mean some lower to middle income workers face a little bit of a higher tax. But the overall intent is to reduce the number, his intent is to reduce the number of tax brackets and bring the rates down. The top rate would go from 39.6% to 33%. The, the fundamental difference, okay, so Trump plan brings down marginal tax rates and average tax rates substantially. Clinton brings them up on the highest income taxpayers alone. So the, the kind of efficiency story, bear with me, I'm getting into the weeds with you here. The efficiency side of this, um, for the Clinton plan, you're gonna create disincentives for the top 1% enhance slightly the incentives for the rest of the population. But she's going to stick it to the rich. The Trump plan, on the other hand, should provide significant, I mean, these are big changes, so significant incentives around small behavioral responses. We would expect to see some, to, some response to that growth. The rub in all of this is that Clinton's plan produces uh, a surplus, and if you want to see this, I would, I would suggest you go to the Tax Policy Center. Um, they have recent reports that line up the two respective plans, and they've gone through an analysis of each of those. It's the Brookings Tax Policy Center. Um, they're, in my view, they're the best game around. Um, the Clinton plan, a $1.4 uh, $1 trillion surplus, and the Trump plan, a $7.2 trillion shortfall over 10 years. So Trump is going to create this enormous deficit. That's just the tax plan. I've not said anything about the spending side of it. Um, so Trump thinks this is going to unleash a tremendous amount of economic growth. The problem is when you look at the analyses of what this means for economic growth, neither of them have much of an effect overall on economic growth. Um, in part because the Clinton plan doesn't do much. So it's not going to have a big effect. The Trump plan, the problem is that he has created such a large deficit, work through the logic with me, federal government goes out into the credit mar market and has to borrow a bunch of money. What's going to happen to interest rates? They're going to be competing for scarce funds and interest rates are going to go up. Well, as interest rates go up, guess what? Businesses invest less and households borrow less and don't spend as much. Another second order effect of higher interest rates is that the demand for the dollar goes up. Higher interest rates here? more attractive to have dollars to put in an American institution and invest at a higher interest rate. When the dollar goes up, it diminishes our ability to export. So in fact, the analyses show that you get this short-run jump in economic growth from the Trump plan that then very quickly erodes because interest rates go up, the dollar goes up, and that offsets the gains of the Trump plan. 